All right, so today we're going to take a look at a band called Sabotage, and this was a suggestion and a request. One of my subscribers who, you know, enjoyed my Dream Theater video and asked me to check out Sabotage says that there's nothing really too satanic about them and they seem okay and, um, you know, at least from what he, you know, he didn't look too deep into it. So I decided I will look a little bit deeper in into this band because I never really listened to them. I do know a few of their songs, but I never, you know, listened to their music like I used to. It, it never really was my thing. But needless to say, boy, oh boy, I found a lot of satanic symbolism. I found a lot of Satanism and I found a lot of a lot of Masonic references and all kinds of stuff while looking at this band. So um, let's start. Um, I just want to say I'm going to try to keep it short. I know I get myself in trouble every time I say I, I say this, but I already know that this is going to be a two part video. So I'm going to try to keep part one short. I don't know. Let's see. Let's just start and then we'll see how far we get. So let's start. Sabotage is an American heavy metal band founded by brothers John and Chris Oliva. Now, why am I going to make two videos? Because Chris was murdered, or while well, he was in an accident, apparently. But we're going to connect his death to some other celebrity deaths in part two. And I'm going to show that a little bit because there's a lot of question marks considering his death. You know, it's kind of very mysterious. It's also yeah it's very questionable you know just as with all these other celebrity deaths they all have something in common and that's a certain mystery around them. so we're gonna take a look at that in part two today we're gonna focus on John Oliva so there are two brothers and they pretty much write all the music and the lyrics and they are literally sabotaged well it used to be because one is already dead now it's all on John but we're going to take a look at this strange character, John Oliva. First of all, let's take a look at some of the album covers. I'm not going to go too deep, but we're going to look at some of the most obvious symbolism. Let's take a look at their first album, Sirens. What do we see right here? Well, first of all, they have lyrics here like Sirens, Holocaust, I Believe, Rage, right? You see some of these album titles, right? Living for the Night. All right, living for the night. Hmm? You can see here some weird, really creepy video as well. Some devil possessed children off to kill or something. I mean, they have murder in their eyes. You can clearly see that. All right, holding a knife right here. Was that a baby? Wow. That is very creepy. And apparently this is the UK edition cover. I never saw this in my life. I did not see this. Uh, I, I didn't see this before when I was looking at that. But I really did not go deep into the album covers either. But we're going to take a look at some of the most um, obvious things. We're going to point them out. First of all, what do we have here? It's a circle, right? Let's take a look at circle. The circle sun this sacred hoop ring. An ancient universal symbol of unity, wholeness, infinity. The idolized female power and the sun. To earth-centered religions throughout history as well as to many contemporary pagans. Notice the word pagans. It represents the feminine spirit or force, the cosmos or a spiritualized mother earth and a sacred space. Gnostic traditions link the unbroken circle to the world serpent forming a circle as it eats its own tail. Wow. All right, we got the blue, right? Got the blue color, right? Let's take a look at the blue. Blue is a supreme color of masonry. First, because it's that color which among all those use the masonry is the unquestioned Masonic possession of every mason. The royal archmason may attempt to appropriate uh, to himself the red, the perfect, imperfect, right? Imperfect master may feel himself the exclusive proprietor of the green and the black and so on. But blue is acknowledged by every mason who belong to us 
all and no mason whatever is agreed questions the master mason's ownership of blue second blue is the supreme color because it has coupled with its universality a place in symbolism which both as regards importance of lessons taught and as uh, regards legitimacy as a symbol is a second to that of no masonic color the use of blue in religion ceremonies as a symbol comes from masonry from many of the different peoples of antiquity among the hebrews various articles the high priest clothing were blue one of the veils of the tabernacle was blue in his initiation into the druidical mysteries the candidate was invested with a robe one of whose color was blue the babylonians clothed their idols in blue the hindu god idol hindu idol uh, vishnu was represented as blue and among the medieval christians blue was considered a peculiarly important color blue is the supreme color of masonry first because it's that color oh sorry i already read this sorry part two <laughs> blue is a symbol of perfection to the hebrews to the druids the symbol of truth to the Chinese, the symbol of deity, and to the medieval Christians, it was a symbol of immortality. So, for the Mason, the color of his Master Mason's Lodge is a symbol of perfection, imperfection, lies, and mortality and deity. That's all that it really should say in, re in, in reality, because that's all that it is. It's garbage. Finally, and preeminently, and following the teachings and conceptions of the Egyptian of the Egyptians, all the Hindus, blue is a symbol of that which is a craftsman must, since he's a mason, always revere, and that which is a master mason's lodge must, when its works and teachings are properly understood and accepted, cause him to progressively revere the more divine wisdom. As you can see, this is Source Builder, writ written July 1919. This was from the Masonic Dictionary.com, and sadly, it's not, the site has been down. Okay. Now, let's take a look at some more of this garbage. So we took a look at sirens. Let's take a look at power of the night. And see right there, I don't even have to go in it. He's breaking the glass, but you can see the fist going through the glass is the Masonic Fist of Resistance, okay? That's that symbol, Masonic Fist of Resistance. When you see all that fist symbolism, you know, it's the Masonic Fist of Resistance. Fight for the rock. Sounds good, right? Fight for the rock. The rock is Jesus Christ. But of course, they're showing you idolatry with the American flag, right? You know, you pledge your allegiance to the flag, which is nothing more about idolatry and garbage. I pledge my allegiance to God alone, to no flag and no country. I don't care about any of that. I only pledge my allegiance to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hall of the Mountain King is a very interesting one. We're going to take a look at some of the lyrics. This is one of their most uh, famous albums and songs so this was the big hit um, we can see the evil king right here we can see the red color right here right let's take a look at the red color red is the color of fire and fire was to the Egyptians the symbol of the regeneration and the purification of souls hence in the Masonic system red is the symbol of regeneration thus red is the color assigned to the royal arts degree since that degree teaches the regeneration of life what is regenerated? How do we get regenerated? When we repent and put our faith in Christ, we are regenerated, right? That's that regeneration, right? When we get baptized, we get dipped in water, right? Water quenches fire, okay? That's how brilliant God is, amen? So, therefore, you can see right here, for them, this is fire, right? But again, water quenches fire amen so you can clearly see the difference in masonry and in true christianity in biblical christianity and what true regeneration is which is repentance toward god amen we look toward god we turn from our sins amen all right now let's continue looking at some of this garbage you have the two pillars right jack and boys right here um the devil is always in the details you got somebody right walking in here right into this temple and actually it is a temple because the song in the in the song he he, he says in the lyrics this this temple of stone or something like that anyway we got to take a look at the lyrics as well um you got the lightning bolt coming right from his fingers right luke 10 18 and i saw satan 
as lightning fall from heaven. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at that right, right away. Let's take a look at that scripture. Let's go to the Bible. Luke chapter 10, verse 18, and I trust the King James Bible, it says, And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Okay, so you got that right there. You got some more of the colors, the green color as well. I'm not going to go into all the colors today. I'm just showing you the most, you know, obvious things. You got right here, what is this? Should be a Bible or something? Probably mockery, I don't know, because, I mean, this does look like a Masonic temple. You got all the gold around it. This is all satanic to the core. Now, let's take a look at gutter ballet. I have a better, higher resolution picture already open because this is very small. Can't really recognize it. So let's take a look at gutter ballet. Okay? You got gutter ballet right here. You can see, you can see the yellow around it. Let's take a look at the yellow, right? The gold, the yellow, right? Let's take a look at the yellow. Yellow was to the ancients a symbol of light. Though unemphasized and seemingly almost unrecognized in masonry, yellow is nevertheless a true Masonic symbol color since it symbolizes to the Mason the great thing to the finding of which his Masonic search is devoted to and the source of which his Masonic pathway leads to the light of lies, not the light of truth, because it's Lucifer. It's false enlightenment. Now, close this we don't really need that anymore we can see right here all the light but this is some kind of skeletal feet you know it looks like Skeletor from He-Man right looks like some type of skeleton right here some type of devil right and uh, we got a devil right up here watching which is a gargoyle a gargoyle just like an alien there devils okay we know the devils in the detail always what do you have here you got a ballerina, but it's like just the ghost of a ballerina, right? You can clearly see that. And right here, same with the audience. These are devils. This is like a haunted theater. That's all that it is. And here it does look like a snake. Okay? Around this pillar. So you can see that this is all clearly satanic to the core. We looked at red. The color red. Okay? So this is satanic as well. All of these albums are, all right? The streets of rock opera is pretty much just a picture of them, but again, it's some obscure picture in some type of temple, right? You can see this garbage behind them and all of that. Always has to be something dark and occult, right? You can see the one-eye symbolism right here as well with the hair and all of that. Yeah. And Streets of Rock Opera is a very blasphemous album because it speaks about a guy called Jesus. Look at this. The story features a fallen rock star called DT Jesus. DT is short for either Detox or Downtown Jesus who has hard times. He's a drug dealer and the story begins in just another low life uh, on the streets of New York City. Streets recounts the story behind DT Jesus and his rise to fame again and his second fail, uh, fall. The concept of Streets is based on a book written by Paul O'Neill as a Broadway play store that draws O'Neill's home until gu guitarist Chris Oliva found it and suggested to be Sabotage's next album. We can see it was never meant to be an autobiogra uh, autobiography and it's considered coincidental in the life of lead vocalist John Oliva mirrored that of the main character D.T. Jesus at the time. Wow, yeah, because he used to sell drugs as well and all that garbage and again we have this rose symbolism now i already exposed the rose in other videos so don't need to look at all of that because it's just gonna take us too long to do all of that but again this is pretty satanic and i'm gonna expose some of the blasphemy off of that album it's for sure right after we look at this we got edge of thorns you got this satanic picture you got this naked lady literally here and you can see her mirrored image right right in the sea they love doing this is as above so below symbolism right Alistair Crowley you got this well it's not in the lake it's, it's a swamp or something right but still you can see as above so below right there and you can see this devil where the light comes from right the false enlightenment yellow we just took a look at that yellow is the ancient symbol of light right so again you get your 
satan satanic you know satanic enlightenment false enlightenment right here this looks like a devil it looks like lucifer it looks like just another demon devil whatever you want to call him the bible calls him devil so i prefer using that term now let's continue got handful of rain which is people call it all oh, the jesus christ pose you know because it's just like christ on the cross right stretched out but you can see one thing right here you see the blue and the red we just looked at those colors you can also see the lightning bolt again luke 10 18 says and he said unto them i beheld satan as lightning fall from heaven you can see that this is jesus speaking because the words are in red okay now also the satanic colors blue and red we already took uh, took a look at that dead winner dead again you got a gargoyle which is pretty satanic right here this is just another devil as we said you got this post apocalyptic garbage right here the blue color which we already exposed and the red again okay right here why is this important yeah, we see all of this okay you got the wake of Magellan and we know I know the story you know Magellan and all of that but you got again the fire right the fiery skies and all of that right the sea and the ship and all of that garbage what I found interesting here is it says the progressive metal band Dream Theater are thanked on the album's liner notes Dream Theater's keyboard player Derek Sherin and Al Petrelli went to college together were both in the band Ethel Mertz and toured with Alice Cooper Trashes the World Tour for the Trashes the World Tour. Petrelli and John Petrucci also played together in a Japanese release called Guitar Battle. Well, why I found this interesting is this album was released in 1997. Take a look at the album cover of Dream Theater from 1997. Just to remind you that was when Falling into Infinity was released and you can see the Vesica Pisces. I exposed the symbolism in that in my dream theater album and what i find very interesting is that this album dream theater was their most commercial album at that time and still is when they basically sold their souls and sold all these albums that was their most commercial album was falling into infinity and at that same time sabotage thanked them right that's how these things go now Let's take a look at the last one, which is Poets and Madmen. And you can see the crow right here. I already exposed the crow before. You can see the spiral symbolism right here, which you could argue. I mean, it's not argue really, but you can actually see that this is six, six, six right here. These are three sixes. And here as well, three sixes, right, on both sides. And I believe that this is, yep, you got the double-headed eagle right here as well, which is the Masonic symbol. Double-headed eagle, let me show you. If we take a look at that, the double-headed eagle in Freemasonry. Right here. 33rd degree, and look at the blasphemy. I N R Y, right? Uh, I N R I, right? As in Jesus, the King of the Jews. It's blasphemy. It's disgusting. You can see it also on the 32nd degree. 32nd degree. Freemasons, right? You can clearly see that this is the same symbolism as the poets and madmen, right? You got it right here, okay? Of course, the darkness again. You got this fly a uh, fiery flying serpent right here okay whatever this is and sabotage in red we already looked at the colors i exposed the raven before 100 percent satanic to the core now let's take a look at some of the lyrics well first of all let's take a look at sabotage hall of the mountain king and i'm going to prove to you that this guy's a satanist <laughs> Let me just mute that so I don't get hit with a strike. 
right there he's showing you the devil horns three fingers up to deny the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Again, he's pulling them up again, right there. And he's going to do it again. Those people that say, oh, you know, this is just a coincidence. No, it's all planned with these people. All of it is planned. Let's take a look. Right again. One more time. He's doing it again. There you go. He's flashing it again. Three fingers up to deny the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He keeps constantly flashing it. Let's show that one more time. I don't want to look through a whole video. I don't think there's really a need to do that. Right here, you get the three. And of course, the black and white symbolism, right? Him wearing a white scarf is that just that duality. Anyway, now, let's take a look at some of these lyrics, okay? Oh, we already looked at all of this. Let's take a look at some of these lyrics. Let's take a look at the lyrics called Morphin Child. There is a thief on a summer's night across an ocean. We see another's life fading away. And of this life he writes without emotion, then pushes it from sight, somewhere far away, a distant land, even uh, every tear betrayed, and never makes, never makes, never makes, never makes a stand, makes a stand. Lord, there's something wrong, makes a stand. Could a star's forgotten light, a child's devotion, embrace eternal night in shallow graves. As we watch from distant heights, no breath or motion, still every ghost must haunt it in its own way. Again, we know the ghosts are devils, okay? So this is all garbage. Sleep beneath my dreams, safe within my hands, where I never under, never under, never understand. Lord, there's something wrong. No one remembers, no one denies, no one asks questions, no one replies. Here nothing enters, nothing departs, here nothing's ended, if nothing starts. In your life you could carry on, could you never think about it, till in time you start to doubt it. Then you close your eyes, it is, re is it really gone? How in truth can you defend her if you're really not remembering? No regrets. If you just forget, if a memory is lenient, you can find it most convenient. So you let it fade till it's very vague. Just a silhouette of shadows, but the shadows are still lingering. Still I hold you there with your endless stare. I'm too old to be living this. Live too long to be given this. Can our God be forgiven this? God here is small g, okay? Can our idol be forgiven this, okay? His God and my God and your God, if you are a Bible-believing, King James Bible-believing, saved Christian is not the same God, okay? I had a light that shined across my mind, rarely I see anymore. He had a light, we looked at the light. He had this light, okay? Yellows to the ancient the symbol of light, though unemphasized and seemingly almost unrecognized in masonry, yellow is nevertheless a true masonic symbolic color since it symbolizes to the mason that great thing to the finding of which is masonic search is devoted to and the source of which is masonic pathway leads to the light of lies, okay? He thinks the light of truth is Freemasonry and Lucifer, okay? And we know that it's false enlightenment. I had a light that shined across my mind, rarely I see it anymore. Now it's mostly dark, you see? You, but he was also playing with that duality, right? Light and darkness. He says, except for sparks, I can't remember what they're for. I am the morphin child, the dream defiled, the never-ending metaphor. I am the Wizard Oz, okay? So he's a wizard, right? And the Wizard of Oz, which we know the whole MK Ultra symbolism. And that, um, um, not just symbolism, but, you know, how they link the Wizard of Oz with, uh, you know, MK Ultra. Maybe I'll do that in a separate video at some point. Result and cause, never look behind that door. Cantations, 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 cantations. Sounds like incantations to me. But you not notice he repeats it four times. He wants to put it you in a trance, right? It's like a trance. Never listen to the crowd before me. Never listen to the self-ordained. Never really wanted to believe it anyway. Time is fading. Night is calling. I'm on my way. So he's a child of darkness. 
The Bible says we are not children of darkness. First Thessalonians 5.5 5. Let's back up to verse 4. But ye brethren are not in darkness. That that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken, are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Amen. All right. Again, verse 9 says, For God had not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. So again, he's telling you that he is of the night. Okay? He is of the night. Time is fading. Night is calling. I'm on my way. Turn around, turn around, turn around. Time is fading. Night is calling. I'm on my way. And this is people saying they are interpreting the song meanings. I guess these are just fans putting their own interpretation. I'm not going to read any of this garbage. No need, really. Let's take a look at another one. Let's take a look at I Believe. This is from their first album, I Believe. I think it is, I believe. All right. Beyond the skies rising so high, set a course for the unknown. But I believe there's life out there. Somehow we'll find it. The countdown begins. Our ship soon will launch on its perilous fight to the stars, a civilized race, or some distant world. They'll find you wherever they go. Wherever they go. I believe we'll find a new world. A new world order. Okay. You can see... The New World Order. Same as on the dollar bill, right? Let's see what it says right here. The dollar bill, right here. Anuit Coeptis Novus Ordo Seclorum. A new world, okay? A new order, a new world, okay? That's all that it is. It's a new world order. And that's what he's speaking about. Every time when you see a new world, they're mentioning that in lyrics. They mean this. It's a new world order. Okay. Let's continue. Can't you see we cannot return? Systems are go as we leave behind. A planet that's doomed to end. Nuclear wars and polluted seas. Doomsday begins its descent. So he's kind of playing a little bit here. Giving you some truth, right? Where do we go? What will we find? Is there life? Are they alive? I believe. For 2,000 years, we sought and we searched the galaxies, black holes, and space. Then on the day of 2013, we came upon a race. You get your 33 right here. 3, 3, and you also get your 13, which is stands for rebellion right i believe we can survive on this sphere plotting a course to enter our stratosphere we're finally here can we survive a cryosphere i hope there's life i believe we'll land our ship on a green barren plane once outside from a box the voice came shifted at least one octave down welcome to earth may we ask who you are our race is called man the planet is done, 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 done. Planet is doomed. Hands of the moon, forgotten tune. The moon, right? The moon. Again, that's that fake god. The sun uh, and the moon, right? The moon god. Allah, the moon god, right? God told us not to worship the sun, nor the moon, nor the stars, right? And sun god is Lucifer. Well, it's all Lucifer because they're false gods. And all false gods represent Lucifer. But, yeah. Again, he repeats it. Hands of the moon. Planet is doomed. Forget the blue. So, I thought this is very interesting. And now, 
Let's take a look at Jesus saves. They're giving you truth right here because Jesus does save. But remember when we took when we uh, took a look earlier on, right? When we read about DC Jesus, right? The drug lord Jesus, right? Or that street dealer Jesus. Well, let's read some of the blasphemy right here. Intro to Jesus saves spoken by the bum. Hey man, got a quarter. You ain't got nothing. That's okay, man. That's okay. God bless you anyway. Here, I hope I didn't scare you or nothing like that. I ain't no bum or nothing like that. Yay. I used to live uptown one, once before you too, you know. No, no, I did. I did really. Used to come down here and look at all the characters. and never thought I'd be one of them, though. Characters, man. A lot of characters. Hey, hey. You got hey, hey, I guess. You got a minute. You got a minute. Let me tell you a story about this friend of mine, D.T. Jesus, used to stand for downtown Jesus. He used to sell drugs and stuff down there, and they called him, that's why we used to call him Detox. He was one character, one character that made it out of here. Let me tell you about him. And then he starts singing. Jesus was a talker, out of place New Yorker, hung out on the boulevard, selling nickel candies, saving all his quarters. Bought himself a cheap guitar and started playing bars. The kids came in their cars. You'd hear them shouting at the stage. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Blasphemy. Jesus started changing. I mean, it's true, but this whole story is blasphemous. Jesus started changing. Things got really strange. He saw his t-shirts everywhere. Started missing shows. The band came down to blows. But Jesus, he no longer cared. Things got out of hand and so he quit the band, but he's st but still the critics they would rave. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Hear him through the night on your late night radio waves. So the dice were cast. Today became the past. And Jesus, he just disappeared, headed for New York, or so his label thought. And there he gave away the years. Last scene, drinking wine beneath the flashing sign. Promising salvation to strays. This is blasphemy because only Jesus can save. Okay? And they're saying that Jesus is just another guy. And in this case, he's a drunken rock star. A drugged out rock star and a drug dealer. This is blasphemous. These people are going to burn in hell for this garbage. And if this does not get you mad when you read this, you ought to rethink what does and get right with the Lord. Because you should be mad reading this piece of trash. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Her, him cut through the night on your late night radio waves. This is nonsense. But of course, oh, it's just a G E C Jesus. Why couldn't he call him, you know, Buddha saves or some other garbage, you know? Or it could be, it's always Jesus they have to mock. Or Allah saves or something else. No, of course, they're going to take a mockery of Jesus, right? This is disgusting. And again, we are, something that I did not point out earlier on. You can see the duality right here, right? Here's the light. The light shines on them, but they're in black, right? They're in darkness, right? You can see the white and the black, right? And as well here, white and black, right? Uh, black and white. Here, they're dressed in black. This is white. There's lightness on them. This is all garbage, okay? This is garbage from the pits of hell. And this is nonsense, okay? Why is this important? Because Manly P. Hall says, When the human race learns to read the, la to read the language of symbolism, a great veil will fall from the eyes of man. That's Manly Palmer Hall who was a 33rd degree Freemason and someone that these people look up to just like Albert Pike a very important figure in Freemasonry okay so it's important that you and me we learn to read these symbols because then we will start to understand amen and this is a quote I like to use in the when I make these videos when we expose these bums now let's read it some of these you know interviews with this fat pig here okay ah oh, no I'm not making fun of your weight right but he is a pig okay he's eating too much donuts and he's blaspheming the Lord so you are a pig to me okay and we're gonna see that he's blaspheming the Lord and he's telling you lies and this as well as blasphemy defenders of the faith who are they defending they're defending their satanic faith because that's all that it is okay this is all that it is they are religious all right God is uh, their God Satan is religious the devil is religious 100 percent 
They are defending their faith, and their faith is the faith of Satanism. Now, let's take a look at what he has to say, and I'm not going to read the whole article, the whole interview, I mean, but I'm going to read to you some blasphemous things that he did say in this interview. Okay? Just one second. All right, no, I, he's, he only, um, yeah, I guess I just wanted to point out that, pointed this out in the Defenders of Faith. There was nothing really interesting I want to read in this interview. I do have a few more, but I actually want to read this. Let's read this, where he talks about D.D. Jesus, right? Um, if Streets was ever made in a movie, who would you like to see cast as D.T. Jesus? And he said, me. I was D.T. Jesus. Paul was an incredible storyteller. He showed me the whole thing for Streets after the Gutter Ballet album. We actually experimented on Gutter Ballet with a few songs because Streets was originally called Gutter Ballet. This was going on to be the, this was going to be the original title. So we experimented. We did a song Gutter Ballet, Temptation, Revelation, and When the Crowds Are Gone. Those were all song uh, going to be part of Streets, but we had cold feet. Paul was like, I don't know, but in this mind, I was D.D. Jesus. In his mind, I was D.D. Jesus, and I didn't know if I really liked that. I didn't want to be him. I'd rather be the drug dealer or somebody else. See? He does not even want to be this fake Jesus, which is sad. I mean, it's not sad. They all worship a fake Jesus, but yeah. All right, and then he continues going on about the song it says here if you listen to both versions of jesus saves the lyrics are the same it's just done differently it's more done more like sabotage okay so he talks about the music yeah he says here but the first demo i got that was awful g awful as in him blaspheming which is disgusting yeah so there's nothing right here anymore that I wanted to point out, but sure is right here. First of all, what can we see right here is the one eye symbolism right here, okay? And this is his, these are his albums. I didn't even look into that. I didn't really even look into his solo stuff. But you can see right here, grotesque, right? Devils, right? Again, doomsday, right? This is um, haunted right here, right? You can see global warming. Okay? Where's a warning? Sorry, global warming. All right. Let's take a look at John Olivas. Olivas, pain. You can see devils right here. Maniacal renderings, okay? These are all devils. And he is the fallen angel right here. You can see the blood. See the fallen angel right here. This is all satanic to the core. Global warning, we just saw that. The green, right? The yellow. That tree. The skeletons, right? It's all death, right? It's all celebrating death. That's all that it is. And we just took a look at this festival as well. And Straight Jacket Memoirs, which is just them. But you get the one eye symbolism right here as well. And I guess here. And all this nonsense. All right. Now let's read this interview. And we're not going to read all of it, but this here was something very interesting where he talks about religion ok 
Could you elaborate a bit about the lyrics? Let's read this bit. Well, that is, when I set the album up in the running order, I kind of worked as a concept. Uh, it kind of worked as a concept, although it's not really a concept. Album, I better not use that word. It starts with Through the Eyes of the King, which is a continuation lyrically of the Hall of the Mountain King. It is kind of what I believe the Mountain King has seen over the last 20 years, and then that starts the record. So, which is a uh, so uh, that is the setting, and on the record, I'm going to show you things and tell you things about all kinds of stuff. The next song thing in the world, the next song, uh, which is in the title track, is me actually telling the fans, telling you that I'm showing you visions of living hell and the bad things in the world. That sets it up for the rest of the album, which is basically each song deals with the different aspects that are going on. A quick example, the end beside you song is something that I want people to understand what I'm saying, something we all experience in your life. You know, there are people always right and there is always evil around you. That is waiting for the opportunity to screw up your life, your life up. And the whole song, of course, he's using, ex you know, disgusting language, right? Um, explicit words, I should say, right? Um, the whole song is like, you know, that sometimes you can have a feeling that the whole, again, he's using it, weight of the world is on your shoulders. There's always evil stuff around you that can screw things up. T deals with politicians and all that stuff. I've seen it in the news and how we, especially being an American, being lied to and just screwed over. And it is uh, like I'm talking about governments. And here he's giving you the truth. That is true. Says they are full of it. They all lie to their people. It is probably worse for America because of twisted people out there. So there's a lot of deep garbage on the new record and it is not about dragons, wizards and Satan. Notice he said Satan, well he said F and Satan, but yeah. And all of that because that has been covered quite sufficient. Ha ha ha, like he's making it a joke, right? It is real stuff and this is stuff I want to say that is what the whole thing I am doing it for, you know, getting a little bit away from that sabotage turn into the handful of rain, you know, the rock opera stuff. This is more like Sabotage was before Paul O'Neill and I just wanted to go back a bit. So so people ask, so this guy asks him, are there also religious aspects in the lyrics? And he says, oh yeah, there's a song called The Answer, which has lyrics like, Jesus show me the answer, your picture is fading, your image is gone, all these religions, cults and TV preachers have made it hard to have any faith at all. And I do agree with that as well, right? They're all money grabbing false teachers says but the album deals with it it deals with everything war politics religion what i always find about these people right they own they will, they will always leave you with a question they don't give you answers if he was a true christian he would give you the answer that that answer is jesus christ for all of that we always look at the bad but it always stays in the bad he doesn't give you you know it always stays on that right it's like he shows you the bad and then he leaves you with a big question mark okay but what can we do to to do it better right well there is something that none of us we can do anything but christ can make it better right so we have to accept christ as our lord and savior but he is not going to tell you that number one because he's a satanist and number two because he's a seller and he's an unbeliever well he, he is a believer because he believes in satan and actually right now with the next question we're going to see that he is a believer are you a religious person yourself? And he says, I do not know actually. I believe in God. I have tried to keep faith, but I believe there is something. Alright. Let's take a look at James 2. Since we saw that this is all satanic, right? Look at verse 19. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Okay? Devils believe and tremble as well. So he does believe. I believe he does believe. I know he knows there is a God. But again, he says, I believe there is something. I have been so battered and confused by all these priests. I was brought up Roman Catholic. Any stuff which I sing about in Dr. Butcher's song, The Altar... Uh, sorry, and stuff which I sing about in the Dr. Butcher song, The Altar. It is really hard to be Catholic right now, you know. Again, he's selling you the false religion, right? 
of Roman Catholicism. Do you believe in the afterlife? He's going to give you a good answer right here, actually. He's going to give some truth. I believe you live once or twice. Death is kind of like getting out of one car and getting into another one. No one is going to convince me that you live here 60 or 70 years you die and that's it. Your spirit is on a timeless flight as I believe that this is all a part of the journey. Once we have been here we're going somewhere else. Nobody will convince me that you're buried in the ground or cooked in an oven and that is the end of it. Of course, none of these people are are uh, atheists. None of these famous people and the ones that say they are, they are being told to push the atheist agenda. To be a Freemason you have to believe in something, in a supreme power, whatever they call it, right? Uh, in a supreme being. So therefore, yes, he is. he does believe, but he believes in Lucifer. He says, no way, man, right? He says, nobody will convince me that you're buried in the ground or cooked in an oven. That is the end of it. No way, man. That's too simple. I'm not buying that. Ha, ha, ha. Okay? But it is really sad. Okay? He talks again about streets and all this other garbage. Again... Not that much here anymore. I think we're going to close it with this. You can see right here. The one eye. And I know it shows both. But the one eye is darkened, right? Let's take a look at Zechariah. Zechariah 11, 17. Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. His arm shall be cleaned right up and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. It's utterly darkened. One eye. It's the right one right here, right? You have one eye, you're not with God. That idle shepherd is Satan, okay? And right here you can see him throw up the devil, devil to once again. Three fingers up to the knife. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Okay? These people are devils. Okay? Satanic to the core. Don't get any worse than that. Okay? Even right here, like, he's just joking by putting on a Viking helmet, but these are devil horns, okay? These represent devil horns. Same right here, devil horns. And we saw him throw up devil horns in, in, in the video as well. Let's take a look at Sabotage Jesus Saves, actually. I still want to take a look at that before. First, take a look at the minute mark, right? Song is 322, as in skull and bones, right? Skull and bones is... 322 okay 322 that's the number somebody also posted Genesis 322 let's take a look at that quickly I don't want to read it there because it's not King James Bible Genesis chapter 3 verse 22 reads and the Lord God said, Behold, man has become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat and live forever. Okay? Yeah, this is not King James Bible. But again, 
you got the everything you got the three two two everything is done on purpose okay now let's see this character Jesus that is Jesus right there and you can see that they're portraying him like the Catholic Jesus Cesar Borgia whatever you call it Cesar Borgia the famous hippie Jesus right which is the Antichrist that's how they're portraying him there you go Jesus is getting drunk wonderful while he's singing singing Jesus saves Jesus is selling salvation to people Jesus is not selling anything salvation is a free gift you see how they mock it right you can see again he the skeleton and all of that right the Satanism there right take a look at the song Jesus saves the lyrics notice right here okay it's promising salvation to strays it's not s selling salvation well my bad sorry about that I, I don't know why I thought it said selling salvation to strays but still to strays still Jesus cannot save. This is teaching you that man can save and that Jesus is just another dude, right? And here Jesus is getting drunk and it's sad. It really is sad. Dealing drugs, getting drunk. That's how they speak about Jesus. At first I saw this, I thought, wow, they, they, they did like a Christian song or something. Or are they Christians or whatnot? And I didn't know, you know. And then I read the lyrics and I was like, boy, oh boy, this is a bunch of blasphemy. All right. Now, let's read the last interview right here. And we're going to close with this. Right here it says, your lyricism is thought-provoking. For example, playing God from the new album raises issues about the current global political climate, such as the East-West conflict propaganda. I guess that's something that concerns you particularly as an American citizen, question mark. I guess it could be. It's really just from how I see everything, whether it's America or, or elsewhere. But I think there's problems everywhere when it comes to politicians <clears throat> and stuff like that. Because I think a lot of them are just lying. And so many times... You watch the news and listen to the news, shows and talk shows. I listen to a lot of that stuff when I'm driving around. And there's so much bull crap, you know. And the people, like us, are really just victims of these lunatics. Again, he's trying to tell you that he's just like us, right? Or just that that's the same thing that Masons believe. Or oh, I'm the everyman, right? That's what Masons want to sell themselves as, right? Oh, we're just like you, right? Oh, we're just like... You know, just like anybody else, right? We're nothing special, right? That's how they think, right? But they are right there in the pyramid above us and we are at the bottom, okay? But that's just how it is. They present themselves, oh, we're just good people, right? We give to charity, we, this, we do this, we do that, and we're just like common people, but they're not, okay? That's really what that's based about it's just based about how I feel about how everybody's running their countries whether it's America or what I really think pretty much a bullcrap really this is pretty much a bullcrap really this is my this is my view you know so he's trying to tell you like because he's trying to deflect of himself oh I'm not a part of the problem right 
I'm not a part of the problem. It's not like I am, you know, some guy that sold a soul to the devil and, you know, I am a part of that issue, right? No, I'm just like one of you, right? We're all being screwed over. And he said, and what about from this, say, Christian viewpoint? There are tensions in today's multi-faith communities. How do you follow your own faith while respecting others' beliefs? He says, I don't really know. I don't know what I believe in anymore. So many bad things have happened. I'm born Catholic, so that right there with all the stuff with the priests and abusing children and all these money scandals going on. I think so many bad things have happened in the name of God that it's hard to really believe in anything anymore. I think you're better off just believing in yourself and getting through this part of existence as quickly as possible with your head still on. Let's go back to Genesis 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, yet God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall he touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil believe in yourself you will be like God right you are like a God that's the lie from the devil and right there you can see that he is selling you that same lie okay I think you're better off just believing in yourself and getting through this part of existence as quickly as possible with your head still on I really don't know what I believe in anymore to be honest with you it is very confusing to me, you know, you start to believe in something and the next thing that you know, you turn around and you find out that they're ripping off all these poor old people for all their savings and they're abusing children. Yeah, that's men, but you don't put your faith in men. You put your faith in Jesus Christ. Yes, man is fallible. We are all are, okay? And it's that wicked flesh. We're all born and conceived in this sin, but that's why we have Jesus Christ. We can't redeem ourselves. These people are trying to teach you that you can redeem yourself where you can only be redeemed through Jesus Christ and only Jesus Christ can save your soul and that is why we need him if we would be able to redeem ourselves Christ died in vain okay so this is all a bunch of nonsense let's continue and we're gonna finish off I really don't know what to believe in anymore to be honest with you very confusing okay we looked at this ripping off all these poor old people for all their savings and they're abusing children okay so you know you start to believe in something next thing that you no, and that, uh, and next thing that you know, you turn around and you find out these people are ripping off all these poor people for their savings and they're abusing children. And this is true. They, that's what they do, right? They devour widows' houses. They're protecting them too. That's the other thing. They get caught doing it and instead of bringing the hammer down on them, they hide them up. That is really true as well. They just move these priests around, right? From one place to the other. Once they get caught, one parish to the other parish. That is true. So it's we're just really twisted. I do agree with that. But he's not. He's again leaving you with a question mark. He's not giving you an answer. So he says, "So I don't really know what I believe in anymore." But look at his answer. I believe in me. Look at what Satan said, in verse five. For God doth know that in the day ye thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods know you believe in yourself you will be like a god okay and that's pretty much it right he's talking about the music he's talking about more music talking about sabotage about his bands looking if there's anything else here that's interesting to us now that's all I have to ask you is there anything else you'd like to say just everyone be safe God bless you all and I hope to see you in March at the prog show and be careful out there it's a nasty world I agree with that but again this is all a bunch of garbage. You have to ask yourself where you stand. When you see this, do you get mad? Do you want to 
Does it make you, you know, want to burn all your CDs and all your albums or at least throw them in the trash? Because I believe that you should do it if you listen to this garbage. You see, God does not share the glory with other gods, with false idols, right? He says, I am a jealous God. Who do you stand for? You gotta ask yourself, do you stand for Jesus Christ or do you stand for these people? Do you want to continue in this sin? Do you want to continue listening to this garbage? Do you want to continue playing this music or do you want to serve the Lord? I'm just letting you know that hell is not worth it. And that Christ died for your sins and rose again on the third day. He lived a perfect life. He was perfect. The only way that you can be redeemed is through him don't get it twisted now you can't just take him right you believe on him and add him to your to your you know twisted life it doesn't work like that you need to repent okay you need to do the first step and say Lord I'm sorry and I'm willing to turn I want to turn from this garbage and I'm looking towards you Lord and I know that you can create a clean heart in me and I pray that you create a clean heart in me and come into my life and He will reveal Himself to you if you're truly sincere and if you sincerely want to know the Lord He will give you everlasting life but all you need to do is repent okay don't take that lightly too many churches and too many preachers are taking it lightly they don't preach repentance they say oh it's a work yes it is a work I agree with that it's a work of the Holy Ghost and it's a gift of God because God grants repentance okay God granted people repentance and he got grants people repentance still nowadays amen so when you feel convicted after listening to this and it makes you cry out to the Lord and it makes you want to turn from your sin and it makes you want to ask him for forgiveness that is God working in you that is not and none of your works okay there's nothing that we can do you were saved by grace through faith alone you know it always fascinates me how many people quote Ephesians 2 8 and 9 but they don't quote verse 10 it says for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast but let's take a look at verse 10 for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them you got to have good works you got to walk in them okay you are created unto good works so you don't need to do good works to be saved but you do them once you're saved because you created unto good works. Therefore, it is impossible to live a wicked life and have Jesus Christ as your Savior. It's absolutely a gutted gospel and people just deceived by, you know, a vain, empty, shallow profession. So make sure that you do repent of your sins and that you are truly sorrowful. And I pray that this video will break you down. I pray that I broke down your idols. I'm happy if I did okay I'm happy if you if you listen to this band that you will turn from this garbage and and come to the Lord that's my only wish and desire because the Bible says in Acts chapter 3 19 I love using this verse because it preaches repentance it teaches repentance it says repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord you tell me, oh, Jesus didn't preach repentance. Are you sure? Why don't we take a look at Luke 13, where he mentions it twice. He says, I tell thee, nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Or those 18 upon whom the tower of Siloam fell and slew them, thinking that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem, he repeats it. He says, I tell thee, nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. You call on the name of the Lord. And how do you call on the name of the Lord? Believing in your heart and professing with your mouth. And confessing with your mouth. In Romans 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believe in our righteousness, and with mouth confession is made unto salvation. Time is getting worse. This guy was right. We live in a nasty, wicked world. But he has no answer. He leaves you with a question mark. I'm giving you an answer. And that is Jesus Christ. I pray this video was a blessing. And I pray that if you're not right with God, you will get right with God. And I pray that if you're saved, and if you still listen to this garbage, well, get right with God. Yeah, and burn it. Okay? 
get rid of it trash it you don't need this nonsense in your life it, it, it's not it's not benefiting you for your spiritual growth okay some good Christian music will but anyway guys I hope that this this video was a blessing and if you're lost I pray that you come to Christ that you repent of your sins and put your faith in Jesus Christ and I pray that this video was a blessing and uh, that it will reach whoever it needs to reach I pray that in the name of Jesus Christ I'll see you guys in part two thank you for your prayers thank you for your support I love you all have a blessed weekend God bless